So I don't know if you could catch all that. You know, I'm getting old, so I need captions all the time. So he said, you know what the most important thing to me right now is? Talking on the phone to Lloyd Vogel, which is that guy's name is that, you know. So Mr. Rogers. If you haven't seen Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, I, I love that movie. The, 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 uh, the puppets still are a little freaky, got to admit. But everything else is really cool. So if you haven't seen it, very, very good movie, though. I'd encourage you to see it. Today we're going to continue our series in James. If you're around our church very long, you'll realize that uh, other than the Gospels, the, the, the book of the Bible I will talk about most often is James. James has so many. I'm a very practical person, if you didn't know that. And James has so many. It's like the Proverbs of the New Testament. It's this, it's this string of pearls of, of wisdom where there's this theme running through each section, but but there's these pearls of wisdom to remind us. And today we're going to talk about listening and doing. So I want to throw something out to you because I struggle with this, and so maybe you do too. Uh, uh, How many in here would love to be a better listener? Anybody in here like to be a better? Did you hear what I said, Randy? I said, would you like to be a better listener? And so the truth is, I think all of us at some point would like to be better listeners. Now, here's the truth. When we talk about listening and doing, some of us are really good at doing, but we're not listening to know what we should be doing, and so what we're doing is not necessarily the most important thing, and I want to give you an illustration of something I should have known, and I don't know, but I'm learning, because I want to be, I'm already working on being a great Disney World grandparent. This is my goal, and so I told Kristen, we've got to practice to get ready so someday, when one of these millions of children we have have a grandchild for us, we are going to steal them from them because now we have our favorite children, which are called grandchildren. That's what I've heard. Is that, is that correct? Is that Okay. Just making sure. So, so in my practice of grandchildren, I was reading an article this week about a group that has been studying Disney World for years. And I, you know, I should have known this. I'm a Disney World expert. I've been going to Disney World since I was a kid when they first opened. My parents took me to Disney World. I have a picture of me this high next to Mickey trying to get his attention, which is probably not a shocker to anybody. But they've done a class since 2015 at uh, uh, El- Elon University. I don't know if that's Elon Musk or I have no idea. But, but anyway, they've done a psychology class and it's called The Science of Happiness at Disney. And what they're trying to discover is what is it about Disney that, that kids especially really want to do? And uh, so, you know, I, because I'm a doer, I assumed because, you know, when I go to Disney, I punch in, I want to make sure how how can we do the best logistics? Let's get to the rides. And when, when is the ride the fullest and the emptiest? And I have certain things that I try to get certain rides. And we've, we've gone on almost every ride, right, at some point. And that doesn't mean me because there's a lot of rides that I go, honey, I'll hold your purse. Have a great time. And uh, I do a lot of that. And uh, I'm just a wimp, so there, there's that. But, so, but this is good news. I, for me, this is good news because th- they did a study, and this is kids. And I should have I known this. I've done, been to Disney World. Number one thing that brings the most happiness to kids, the characters, the the time that they get to connect with the Disney characters. Yeah, yeah. Number two, fireworks. And most of us don't even stay. We're like done. We're out. Third didn't shock me either, although maybe I should have been shocked. It's the pools at the resorts. And then rides. Now, the only time that changes is for teenagers, basically all the things are there, but rides move to number one, and then character visits and and all the other things. Now, here's why I should have known that. A few years ago, I took Lydia to Disney World. One of the friends of ours got us into Disney World for free, which is always a great perk to have friends. And, uh, uh, And so we got to go into Disney World and we went in and and Lydia apparently had seen a commercial and this was when Frozen was really popular and and, uh, uh, Lydia loved Elsa and Anna. And so she said to me on the way in the door, I want to meet Elsa and Anna. So we went in and the first thing I do is we, uh, I don't know if I looked on the app first or if we went there first, I can't remember, it's back in the old days. And so we went and it was, ready? 
over, over, the timer ran out of numbers. It was over a three-hour wait. And so I pretty much said to her, we can do anything in the park except that. Anything except that. Oh, my gosh, you should have seen her face. She got upset. I, I just want to meet Anna. I just want to meet Elsa. And I'm, well, uh, I don't know what I could do. So I said, well, let's go on uh, uh, Peter Pan, you know. And uh, uh, so I went over to Peter Pan. It only had an hour wait, right? So we're, we're waiting. We go through Peter Pan. We come out of Peter Pan. My friend who had taken us runs over to me and says, hey, come with me, which, uh, you know, it's like, some, I, it, if you don't want to die, follow me now. And so I went with him. He talks to the guy at the frozen thing, character thing. The guy says, come with me. We walked past, Lenny and I walked past three hours of people, just walked in front of all of them. And I wish you could have been there. So I took, brought a picture. It was the best part of our day. She could care less what we did after that. She got to meet Elsa and talk to her. And, and we sat there and they were so kind. They got down and face to face with Lydia and talked to her and talked about feeding the rain, reindeer. Carrots? Is it reindeer? I said horse last night, and everybody in the whole room corrected me. Now, let me tell you just a side note of this story. I posted this on Facebook. My aunt, who's in Texas, messaged me and said, Eric, what is your daughter doing with my pastor's daughter? I said, what? She said, my pastor's daughter was working at Disney for the summer, and she's next to your daughter. I said, now that is amazing. Now, here's the thing. I'm logistical dad. I am, when we go on a vacation, I am, we got to stop for the bathroom. Can we wait till we get gas so I can get gas, bathroom, and a three-star stop with food? Now, I'm not as bad as a friend. I have a friend who's psychotic. They bring a bucket on trips. We're not going to talk about that, but that's like too much, too far, too far. Now, here's the thing. Can I tell you something about your family? Their goal is not your goal. And sometimes we're so busy trying to do or get somewhere, we actually are destroying the very people we're traveling with. Now think of that bigger. Sometimes we're so busy doing life that we're not really present and paying attention to the people who we're doing life with. And that's why listening is supposed to come first. And you guys have known me long enough, those of you, even if you've been here for a week, you're like, this guy's ADD. To which my doctor would say, no, he's not. He's ADHD. But either way, people say that to me all the time. And I say, did you know that everybody at certain points of their life is ADD? We all get distracted. You live in a world, and, and listen, you, if you want, get a piece of paper. And do this. If you want to enjoy your week, every week the news and the politicians are going to try to tell you what you're mad about. You know, I've said this over and over. What you're mad about or afraid of. If they can't get you with anger, they'll get you with fear, right? Think about it. Think about why. Because that's how they sell commercials. That's all. They don't care about you. But if you think a politician cares about you, okay, I've got, I, I have a statement to say, but it, it involves bad things, so I'm not going to say it. All right, so they don't. They don't care about you. I'm just, they don't. They don't. I'm sorry. But here's the thing. If you will write down every week that and recognize that that's not the most important thing first. See, James in the early church is telling us what the most important things are. He's reminding us that we need to stop and pay attention because the world, even back then, was always trying to pull us off of what God has for us. So let's pick up today. We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about uh, how sin stunts our growth and I would say distracts us, how actions speak louder than words, and then how focus leads to faithfulness. So number one, sin stunts your growth. And let's go into some of these 
pearls of wisdom. My dear brothers and sisters, and by the way, I love this. My dear here is the word, uh, it involves the word for agape. And agape, if you don't know, is one of the several, there's several kinds of, like we just say love, but in Greek they have different kinds of love, like philio, Philadelphia, friendship, love. But agape is like this pure, perfect love. And so he's saying, hey, I love you, man. He's starting out with, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this, which basically means, listen. Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Time out. This word for quick means on time. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've ever had a conversation with somebody, and then a few minutes later you got in the car, or you were walking somewhere, and it hit you what they said. And you were like, oh, oh, I should have been present. I was... As it comes back to you, you're like, oh no, you missed it. And so it says, be present, be there, be on time, be in the moment. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. By the way, we're not slow to speak. We're preparing what we're going to say often when somebody else is talking. That's, that's probably most of us struggle with that because we're already moving on. Uh, quick to speak, slow to, uh, uh, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Now I'm going to get back to this angry part in a minute and see how I got to sin on this. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness, that means doing what's right, that God desires. Therefore, what do you do? Get rid of moral filth, the evil that's so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So what do all these little pearls, what's the string here? This is all sin. Anger, moral filth, all these things are lust instead of love. I've had a thousand Marital conversations with people. And they will say, I've done this for our relationship. I've done this for our relationship. I've done this for our relationship. And then the other spouse says, yes. And then you get angry. And I say, you know, anger is like raising roses. And I have roses at our house. And, and I'm careful with our roses. We've had this one rose bush for three or four years. The deer come and eat the tops off of it. I just assume they're taking it's Bambi taking it to mom. But anyway, and and so so this one rose bush I've been been working on and everything and I realized the other day it's dead. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I was spraying Roundup. Oh no. So in the next few weeks I will be taking a shovel and we will be getting a new rose bush and starting over, which is much more work, right? Because this rose bush is this high now. Here's the deal. When you work on a relationship and you feed a relationship and you take care of a relationship and then you have one angry outburst where you say all kind of things, that's Roundup. And so don't think you can just put a little water on it. Don't think you can just put a little fertilizer on it. It's going to be okay. There's some digging that needs to take place when you do that. That's why here it's such a warning about be careful of this anger which makes you do dumb things, like that guy at the gas station. By the way, you're not a small person. If somebody messes with me, people are like, yeah, why would you not? If they mess with you, they're like, going to die. I don't understand that. It makes no sense. By the way, you're the second person in two days. Yesterday, somebody else told me about a crazy person at the gas station. So I don't know what's going on at gas stations, but y'all be careful out there. That's all I can say. All right. So anger is, is ruining relationships. And here's the bigger thing. Lust is ruining relationships. And most of anger comes out of selfishness and self-centeredness. That's why, you know, people are like, oh, pornography is no big deal. You know, what I look on the internet is no big deal. Gossip's no big deal. Lusting after what somebody has. You know, the fact that I want the newest and the latest and the greatest. Here's the problem. It pushes you from selflessness, which is love, to selfishness. I want, I want, I want, I want the way I want. Unrealistic expectations. And what happens? You get angry when you don't get what you want when you want. I mean, truthfully, come on. The microwave has caused us to be less patient. Haven't you stood in front of your microwave and wondered how long is this one minute going to (laughs) take? Our grandparents are like, you know, putting coal in the oven. You know, whatever. I don't know what they did. I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up at this point. (laughs) You, You tell me later what they do. They're cranking up the oven. I don't know what they did. All right. 
Jesus says this, Matthew 7. We're going we're gonna to look at this passage, what Jesus says compared to what James says. James, Jesus' brother, we talked about that last week. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious look. Whoa, on the outside they look good. By the way, there's many pastors lately who I even thought, man, they say what's right, they do what's right. Man, what a great teacher. And then they died and all of a sudden all this garbage they had been doing, which is just crazy, comes out and you're like, what? I thought this was a righteous, godly person. And they were paying women to be quiet about what they did to them. Ugh. Ugh. Just the kind of people that Jesus is talking about. People who say one thing outwardly. Be careful because outwardly, boy, they look really good. They say the right things. They look like they do the right things. But inwardly, they're just looking how to take advantage of you. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. And then it says this. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise... Every good tree bears good fruit, but bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And Jesus is doing two things here. First of all, he's saying, be careful who you trust. Don't just watch what they say. Watch what they do with what they say. But then he's also challenging us. What's your fruit? Can you look back at any time this week where you went out of your way to unselfishly serve or bless someone else because of the love God's poured into your heart? Is there any fruit from this Christian life you're supposed to be living? Is there anything where somebody else would say, one of your neighbors would say, yeah, they're different than the rest of our neighbors because this is how they... Treat people, encourage people, bless people, go out of their way. There's so many people who come to church on the weekend and sit and soak and listen and hear the right things and do nothing about it. That's where we get in trouble. Resist sin and plant God's word. We have to be careful of sin. Why? Because it distracts us. It destroys us. It messes us up. It gets us focused on selfishness. I love what Henry Blackaby says. God's commands are, decide, are, are there to designed to guide you to life's very best. You will not obey him if you do not believe him and trust him. You cannot believe him if you do not love him. You can't love him unless you know him. So stand, stunts your growth. Number two, actions speak louder than words. Now, I know some of you aren't big Alexa fans, but I am. And the reason I am is because I'm lazy. I am, I am as lazy as I can be. So I love walking in a room and saying, Alexa, turn on lamp. Boom, the lamp's on. I'm like, <laughs> I feel so powerful today. Alexa, turn off lamp. The lamp goes off. Woohoo! Alexa, clean my house. Nothing. But I will tell you, it's gotten to be funny, and Chris and I have talked about this. We're pretty sure that we have a teenage Alexa. Let me tell you why. We walk into a room, I say, Alexa, turn on lamp. Alexa does this. She says, okay. No lamp turns on. I say, Alexa, turn on lamp. Okay. No lamp. I'm like, I've got the teenage Alexa. Alexa, turn on lamp. Bling. Okay. We got to yell at you now? How's this working? Now, anybody who's been around a teenager, had a teenager, taught school at all, Knows exactly what it's like to say, hey, would you clean up your room? Yeah. And then you go up there, you're like, why didn't you clean up your room? Oh, you wanted me to clean up my room? I would almost, my kids, rather go to me, nope. Than for me to get them to go, yep, and then be like, what? Because at least I can kill them ahead of time and not later, right? So, so it's the truth, right? So here's the deal. James is saying, all of us are like teenage Christians. We say the right things, but we don't always carry them out. Listen to what he says here. Do not merely listen to the word. Clean up your room. Turn on the lamp. Okay. And deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And this word literally means take action. Do something. 
anyone who listens to the word but doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Now, I told this story last night. My wife wasn't here, so she's going to get to hear it today. It's a little embarrassing, but it's okay. She's, she's going to be like, yeah, of course, that's what happened. So I eat raisin bran in the morning. Just the simple Kellogg's raisin bran. You know, put it in a bowl, a little soy milk, a little regular milk. Depends on the mood I'm in. I can't tell the difference between how they taste. I'm sorry. I know I should know. And I know there's no real almond milk. It should not be called milk. I get it. So I make a little bowl. Now, I just want you to know that I really should sit at the table to eat. But I like my comfy chair. So I go and I sit in my chair and I... Sorry, you don't need to see me eat like a cow, but that's probably true. Don't ask her. She'll lie for me. So I eat my raisin bran. A few hours later, hours later, I passed a mirror. And it was obvious that I had not eaten raisin bran at a table. Because I was covered with bran. And I'm guessing somewhere in the house are raisins. But the bran sticks, the raisins don't. And I looked at myself and I'm like, you really need to eat at a table. You are not, you are a baby. You need a bib or something, right? And I was embarrassed. I'm like, oh my gosh, what a doofus. I mean, how long have I been walking around with cereal all over me? And here's the truth. If my dog liked cereal, that wouldn't happen because he'd climb up and take it off. But that's another story for another day. Matthew 7, Jesus says this, thus by your fruit, you'll recognize them. Now, this is a heavy scripture, but listen to it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy, listen, in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform miracles? And I'll tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. And I'll never forget in seminary, uh, one of my professors said, the idea of this in the original language is the idea that you, did, you said my name, but you did it in your name. You said my name. You said, oh, I'm doing this for Jesus. But you did it what? To manipulate people, to control people, to make yourself look good, to impress people. Many on that day, it says, will say, but God, I did stuff, you know, for you. No, you did it for you. And one of the most important parts of listening and getting still is sometimes to recognize there's times where we think we're doing something for God. When if we're not careful, what we're really doing is for us. So that somebody can say, good job. So that somebody can say, way to go. Even sometimes so that we can feel good. There's nothing wrong with feeling good. There's nothing wrong with being told you did a good job. But the truth is, what is our motivation? Act on what you know. That's why First John, it says, if you walk in darkness, don't pretend you know the truth. If you're just doing whatever you want, however you want, just don't say you're a Christian. It's not big, but just don't, don't pretend you're somebody that you're not. Number three, focus leads to faithfulness. I'm going to tell you about the most focused time in my life. It's very rare, so I can remember exactly the most focused time. We were a kid. Our church got a brand new air hockey table. And I was sixth grade. There was a senior. And the way they did the air hockey table is everybody lined up. And whenever whoever won got to stay, and the other people had to move. And so for about an hour and a half, I noticed that the senior was still there. And somebody said, hey, you're good at air hockey. You should go play. So I got in line. Got to the front of the line. I was taking on the senior who had beat everybody forever. And suddenly I was focused. Next thing you know, I score on him and he loses his mind. Tells me I'm not playing fair. <laughs> Just focused me more. You talk about ADD moment. I could see the puck. Suddenly it's the matrix. Whooped him. One. 
He was mad, threw down the thing. Next kid comes up. I whooped everybody the rest of the night. It was awesome. My focused moments hasn't happened since then. Here's the truth about life. Too often, we're so busy that we, don't, we read God's Word in the morning. Maybe we have our devotion in the morning. We have no idea what we read literally moments later, much less hours later. If you're going to meditate on Scripture, meditate is, is literally what a cow does to cut. It means it brings it back up. You should at least know or have an idea of what you studied so that you can bring it back up during the day and let the Lord speak to you. He wants to call you. He wants to remind you. The Holy Spirit wants to remind you of what the Word says. Here's what it says in James. Whoever looks intently, and this word for intently in the Greek is to, to look over, to go out of your way like I did with air hockey. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, Listen, not forgetting what they heard. Does that sound like your devotion this morning? Not forgetting what they heard, but doing it. They'll be blessed in what they do. But what do you got to do? You got to listen first. Don't just take off and think, I got to do whatever. No, no. Listen first and then do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a right tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves. Can we just cross that one out of the Bible? Because I'm really good at controlling my tongue when people do and say what I want them to say. But sometimes there's that one person who just, and I just, <laughs> and sometimes we say something nice, but what we really mean is not nice, been there. And their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. What is it? Look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. By the way, if you want to do something for God, you can always help widows and orphans. One of the reasons that we've planned trips to Black Mountain, and we're not going to go this year, but one of the reasons we, we plan trips is because we're dealing with orphans and widows. We're helping people who need help. We know that we're doing what the Bible has called us to do. It's one of the reasons that we help with boys and girls clubs in our community. Widows and orphans in their distress. Jesus said, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, later in Matthew 7, is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. My last encouragement to you is to let the word change your actions. Now, I'm not going to be far from my phone for the next two weeks. And I want you to be able to listen the way I'm paying attention to my phone. You're like, what, are you an addict? No. On Friday this week, because I did not want to go back to the hospital, we went to a heart doctor. And the nurse came in. They put this heart monitor on me. It's right here. And she said these words. Well, we're going to see what your heart is doing. And if your heart starts to do something where you need to go to the ER, we will call you. That'll make you pay attention to your phone. We'll call you and let you know you ought to go to the ER. You're having a heart issue that might kill you. Nice. Hello? Last night during church, my phone rang about the time I was doing this. I looked down. It was my son. That was hilarious. Very funny. Now the phone rings. I look at it. And I'm like, oh, just one of my kids. Right? Because all of a sudden, this phone call doctor phone call becomes really important listen what if God's speaking to you showing you what you should do became the most important thing in your life I want to encourage you take time to listen first of all to him and then listen be present with other people I know it's hard I'm a, I'm a non-example but say God I not only want to be present with you and listen to you, I want to be present when I'm talking to people. I want to show them your love as I talk to them and care about them. If you didn't get anything else out of this message, I hope, I hope that you'll, you and I will learn to listen. Listen to him and listen to others. Let's close in prayer today. If you're here today and want to give your life to Christ, I'd love to talk to you about what it means if you're watching, walking on, watching online or walking online. You can send me a note. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. I pray that we really would learn to listen to you and listen to others.
Father, help us to be present where we are. First of all, present as we're reading your word, allowing your word to soak in and help us to grow. But Lord, also resisting sin so we can continue to grow in your word and your power. Lord, I pray also that we'd be so full of your love that it would be natural to love and be present with the people around us. We thank you for this time this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here this morning,